Hello everyone, and welcome to our Cosmic Classroom, and a special welcome to students and teachers at Moorhead Elementary School. Today we will be featuring your school building in our planetarium software. And so as we fast forward through time and let the sun set, we will start to see more stars in the sky, appearing exactly how they would if you were to stand outside of your school. If we wait until it is dark enough, we can see an important constellation right over your school building, Ursa Minor, the Little Bear, which has the North Star, Polaris, at its tail. And as we are now officially in the summer season, there are a couple different constellations that are highly visible now. If we look towards the east, we can see Delphinus, the Dolphin, Aquila, the Eagle, as well as Cygnus, the Swan, just to name a few. Not only does the summer season have some different constellations visible in the nighttime, during the daytime we have temperatures that are getting hotter since the northern hemisphere is tilted more towards the sun during this time, so we feel more of the heat coming from the sun. Today we will be focusing on the central star of our solar system. As we travel to the sun, let's go over some basic facts. First, the sun is very, very old, about 4.5 billion years old. But as a yellow dwarf star, it is still less than halfway through its life cycle. From our view on Earth, the sun looks pretty small in the sky since we are 93 million miles away. Even though the sun is actually 400,000 miles across, it is still pretty small compared to the other types of stars that exist. However, compared to the Earth, the sun is 109 times wider, meaning you can fit 1.3 million Earths inside of the sun. An easy way to think of this size comparison is to imagine the sun was as tall as your front door, and so the earth would be the size of a nickel. We can see here on the surface of the sun there are several dark spots called sunspots. These sunspots are actually places on the surface of the sun that are much cooler than the surrounding area, meaning they are only about 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit instead of nearly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Sunspots form in places where the sun's magnetic field is particularly strong. So then at sunspots, we can get solar flares, a sudden explosion of energy caused by the crossing or reorganizing of these magnetic fields near the spots. And if they are intense enough, they can sometimes affect radio waves and interfere with radio communications here on Earth. Similar to the Earth, the sun has different regions beneath its surface. While the Earth has different solid layers, the Sun does not, since it is made up of gas and therefore has no solid surface at all. The visible regions of the Sun are the photosphere and the chromosphere, and the outermost atmosphere layer of the Sun is called the corona. The photosphere is the layer that gives off visible light, and it's the deepest layer of the Sun that we can observe directly with instruments. We can see the corona directly by looking through special filters, like eclipse glasses, that allow us to look directly at the sun during a total solar eclipse. While the sun is very far away, it still reaches us here on Earth every single day, taking only about 8 minutes for the light coming off the sun to travel here. In several different ways, the sun makes life here on Earth possible. One important role the sun plays in our daily lives is being the center of our solar system. Since the sun is so much larger compared to the planets, its gravity pulls on them, causing them to orbit around the sun, where one complete orbit around the sun is called a year. This gravity keeps the planets local to our part of the Milky Way galaxy instead of going off into space. We also get energy from the sun in a few different forms, through different types of light. The most obvious form is visible light, since we can see this sunlight with just our eyes alone. Visible light allows us to see in the daytime, and it's even present at night when the sunlight reflects off the surface of the moon to make it look like it's glowing. The sunlight is also important for plants. It's a key part of their photosynthesis process. In this process, plants take in sunlight and carbon dioxide to make food, and then they give off oxygen. This process is particularly important to us since we need the oxygen they give off, and the plants need the carbon dioxide that we give off. The two other types of light that we receive from the sun are infrared light and ultraviolet light, which are both invisible in the sense that we cannot see them with our eyes alone. Infrared light is what heats our planet, making it warm enough that we can live here, and that we are not a cold, icy planet like Uranus or Neptune. Infrared light has the least amount of energy of these three different kinds of light. 
Ultraviolet, on the other hand, has the most energy and makes it more dangerous for us. Thankfully, our atmosphere absorbs most of the UV light, but it can cause sunburns if you are not careful. From impacting our weather and climate conditions to the magnetic field that reaches all the way to the edges of our solar system, the sun plays several different important roles in our everyday life. And so, in the summer in particular, we appreciate the sun as we have longer and warmer days. Thanks for joining us, and as always, don't forget to keep looking up. Thank you.